Pennsylvania in the middle of October on a gray day. I'm on I-90 going northbound, or eastbound, I guess. Kind of goes north and east. I took 271 up from the Cleveland area. I used to live here, so this is all very familiar to me. I think it looks beautiful year-round. Shout out to the people who know how good it is. Presque Isle is a crown jewel. There are all kinds of great places to live. I've often thought about where to retire. Oregon Coast is spectacular. The Columbia River Gorge, where my dad lives, is spectacular. Places in Canada. Lots of places. And all over the world has its places. I think the best, though, is where you feel at home. For whatever reason. Another little peak as we're leaving. I lived here 18 years. A lot of really wonderful things happened in my life during the time I was here. And painful. But all good. All good. It's kind of fitting that it's not a bright blue sky. We might have that though as we get closer to Buffalo. It's funny, the voices in my head, they want me to think of every possible thing here. All the beautiful things, all the difficult things. It's like they're ganging up on me, wanting me to feel emotions. And I've noticed that if I don't take their suggestions, and I'll feel better emotions. It's not like I'll be this psychopath who doesn't feel anything. It's just that if I get rid of all of the Cabal's suggestions, what's left is very good. Like distilled bourbon, the very best, or cognac, or whatever else you want to distill, gin, get it just right and then that's the absence really of everything that they want so a thought left over from yesterday is that you'll be really happy if you figure out how to reject all of the emotions that your enemies, your adversaries, visible and invisible, suggest to you. You're not going to be neutral. You're not going to be lifeless or listless. You're not going to be without energy, enthusiasm for life. You're not going to be a psychopath who doesn't feel emotions, who doesn't feel other people's pain or joy. Everything more intensely if they're your own feelings instead of feeling what other people want you to feel. If you're in a relationship with somebody who wants to control you and that person is sending you whatever they're sending, they're sending you energy, they're sending you um, trials, like tests. They're putting you in positions that are designed to get some kind of an emotional response from you. And if it feels like a chess game sometimes, that point of that game is only to alter your emotions. It isn't to get a certain outcome from you. It isn't, I mean, usually could be, but ultimately the point is to get you to respond a certain way, emotionally. And that is true even more so of the invisible people that I'm always ranting about. 
have um, hidden strength that they don't know about that allows you to just let those suggested emotions not be your emotions. Let them float around outside of you. You can see them, but you're not choosing them. In fact, you're choosing not to feel them. And it's a superpower. You don't have to change your circumstances. You don't have to change how other people treat you. That's immense. You don't have to fight for your rights. You don't have to get powerful. I mean, you will get powerful this way, but it's, it's not the traditional way. You don't have to better people up. That's a, a great one. You don't have to be disingenuous. You don't have to be fake. You don't have to be a flatterer. You can call a spade a spade. What you can do is accept how other people treat you. You can accept the obstacles that come to you when your pathway seems to be contested. And in doing that, in doing that while you're choosing your own emotions, you can totally flummox the people who are doing everything they can to get you to feel a certain way. Think about the people that love drama. They incite other people and if the other people don't respond, there's no drama. And the people who thrive on drama are powerless. They can't get the attention they want. They can't get they can't get that feeling of power as they watch people jump around according to their whims. Ultimately, the psychopaths of the world, the ones who are powerful, do everything they do for that reason to get everyone else to respond a certain way and some don't even care what the response is as long as they know they're behind it and they've caused it and they can observe it so this power that I'm talking about that you can claim isn't power over others but it can be but ultimately it's power over yourself that allows you to be sovereign and blissful regardless of what anyone else does and regardless of whatever life circumstances are. So there you are, insanely happy if you want to be, no matter what. People who need you not to feel that way are suddenly powerless, which in my mind makes you very powerful. And in their minds too, makes you very powerful. Anyone who can resist them, when, especially when they're used to being irresistible, then that's a powerful person. Think about Carmen in the opera Carmen. Think about Don Jose. And he's the only one she's bumped into who can effectively ignore her charms. And for that reason, he suddenly becomes irresistible to her. And that's not what she's used to. She's used to being irresistible to other people. I just wish he could have maintained it. I wish, like um, George Clooney, I wish he could have maintained it. But he caved in, and as soon as he caved in, everything went to hell in a handbasket. It would be great to discuss that opera with somebody as I'm driving down the road. Do you ever feel like um, having a... I, I'm going to buy a new headset so I can be totally hands-free. Sometimes I lean forward and I have to hit my um, GPS unit because my phone comes through my GPS unit now to be hands-free. I'm legal, but it's still not as good. It would be fun to go down the road talking about Don Jose and Harvin and the other characters in the opera and how 
or anything. Talk about movies, whatever you like to talk about. I'm an awful lot of hours on the road today. And it, it, it'd be nice to have someone to chat with sometimes. And I come through this way often enough that I was pretty sure I'd get to see it in October and November.